Ramba Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day. Matnot Aniyim, chapter two. Halacha one. Any food that grows from the earth is guarded, is harvested at the same time, and is placed in storage, is required that Pe'ah be separated from it. As Vaikra states, when you reap the harvest of your land. Halacha 2. Anything that resembles a crop is har- that is harvested by having these five qualities requires that pe'a is separated from it. For example, grain, legumes, carobs, nuts, almonds, pomegranates, grapes, olives, dates, whether dried or fresh, and any similar produce. By contrast, indigo, rubia, and the like are exempt because they are not food. Similarly, truffles and mushrooms are exempt because they do not grow from the earth, like other produce of the earth. Similarly, ownerless produce is, is exempt, for there is no one to watch it, for it is free for anyone to take. Similarly, figs are exempt because they are not harvested at one time, instead on the tree. There are some that will become ripe on one day, and others that will not become ripe until after several days. Similarly, vegetables are exempt, for they are not placed in storage. Garlic and onions require that power be separated, for they are dried out and placed in storage. Similarly, seed onions that are placed in the earth to produce seed require that power be given from them. Similar laws apply in all analogous situations. Halacha 3. A portion of land of any size requires that Pe'a be separated from its produce. This applies even if it belongs to partners. For the proof text states, the harvest of your land, even if it belongs to many people. Halacha 4. When Gentiles harvested a field for their own sake, thieves harvested it, ants destroyed its produce, or the wind or an animal crushed it, it is exempt from Pe'a, for the obligation of Pe'a lies on the standing grain. Halacha 5. If he harvested half of it and thieves harvested the remaining half, it is exempt. The obligation was incumbent on the half that was harvested by the thieves. If, however, thieves harvested half of it and the owner harvested the remaining half, he should leave power according to the measure of what he harvested. If he harvested half and sold the remaining half, the purchaser, purchaser must leave power for the entire field. If he harvested half and consecrated half, the person who redeems the half from the temple treasury must leave power for the entire field. If he ha- harvested half, the field and consecrated what he harvested, he should leave Pe'af for the entire field from the remainder of the crop. Halakha 6. The following rules apply when a person harvested some of the grapes in his vineyard to sell in the marketplace, but had the intent to leave the remainder for the vet to press for wine. If he would harvest for the marketplace from either side of the vineyard, he should give Pe'af for the grapes that he harvested for the vet according to the to the amount that remain. If you would harvest for the marketplace from only one side, you should leave the amount of power appropriate for the entire field from the amount remaining. The rationale is that since he harvested from only one side, he is not considered as harvesting haphazardly, in which instance he would be exempt from leaving power. Similarly, when a person harvests ears of grain bit by bit and brings them home, he is exempt from leket, shichacha, and power, even if he harvested his entire field in this manner. Halacha 7. When a person harvests his entire field before it becomes completely ripe, before it reaches a third of its growth, he is exempt from power if it reached a third of its growth. He is obligated. Sorry. If it reached a third of its growth, he is obligated. Similarly, with regard to fruit from trees, if a third of their growth is completed, then there is an obligation to leave power. Halacha 8. When a person consecrates his field while his grain is standing and redeems it while, it's, while it is still standing, there is an obligation to leave Pe'ah from it. If the temple treasurer harvested it and then he redeemed it, it is exempt. For at the time when the obligation for, for Pe'ah became relevant, the field was consecrated and that th- thus there was no obligation to leave Pe'ah from it. Halakha 9. When a Gentile reaps his field and then converts, he, he is exempt from Pe'ah, Leket and Shichacha. This applies even though scripture mentions the obligation of shichacha only with regard to the time when, le- when sheaves are transferred. Halakha 10. One may not hire non-Jewish laborers to harvest because they are not knowledgeable with regard to the laws of leket and pe'ah. If one hired them and they harvested the entire field, he is obligated to leave pe'ah. Halakha 11. When a landowner harvested his entire field and it did not leave power, he should give some of the stalks of grain as power to the poor. He does not have to tie the grain he leaves as power. Even if he gives the majority of the harvest as power, he is exempt from tithes. Similarly, if he threshed the grain but did not winnow it, he should give them power before he tithes. If, however, he threshed and winnowed the grain with a pitchfork and a shovel and completed the task, he should tithe and give the poor tithe, pro- the poor tithe produce equivalent to the appropriate measure of power for that field. Similar concepts apply with regard to trees. 
after 12. Pass should be left only at the edge of the field so that the poor will know where to come to collect it. So it will be obvious to, obvious to passers by and they will not suspect that the owner did not leave power. And so that deceivers will not intend to harvest their entire field and will excuse themselves by telling the observers, I left it in the beginning of the field. Also, leaving it there will prevent him from waiting until a time when no one is present and leaving it for a person, poor person with whom he is close. If a person transgressed and left Pa'a in the beginning or the middle of his field, it is considered as Pa'a. It is consi uh, but he must leave an appropriate measure of Pa'a for the portion of the field that remained after he separated the initial Pa'a. Halakha 13. When the owner of a field gave Pa'a to the poor and they told him, give us from the other side, and he gave them from the other side as well, both of the gifts are considered as Pa'a. Similarly, if the owner of a field separated Pa'a and then said, this is Pa'a and this is also is, or this is Pa'a and this, they are both Pa'a. Halakha 14. It is forbidden for workers to harvest the entire field. Instead, they should leave the appropriate measure of grain for Pa'a at the end of the field. Nevertheless, the poor do not have a share in it until the owner willfully separates it. Therefore, although a poor person sees Pa'a at the end of a field, he is forbidden to touch it, lest it be considered as theft until he knows that it was left with the consent of the owner of the field. Halakha 15. Pa'a from grain, legumes and other similar species of crops that are harvested and similarly pa'a left in vineyards and orchards should be given while it is growing from the earth. The poor should grab it by hand, they should not cut it with sickles, nor uproot it with hatchets, lest one person accidentally strike a colleague. If the poor desire to divide it equally among themselves, they may, if help, they may. If, however, 99 say that they desire to divide it and one says that each should grab what, what he can, we listen to the latter, for his statement is in accord with Torah law. Halakha 16. Pa'a from a grapevine draped over a high wall and from a date palm that the poor cannot reach to grab except at great danger, the owner of the land should bring it down and divide it among them. If they all desire that it be left to be grabbed, that option is followed. If, however, 99 say that they desire that that they desire for it to be left to be grabbed and one says that it should be divided, we listen to the latter. For his statement is in accord with the law, with the Torah law. We obligate the owner to bring it down and divide it among them. Halakha 17. At three times during the day, Pa'a is divided among the poor or left for them to take at daybreak, at noon, and at mincha. When a poor person does not come at these times, he is not allowed to take, so that there will be fixed times for the poor so that they will all gather together to take Pa'a. Why wasn't only one time a day established for the poor to take? Because there are poor nursing mothers that need to eat at the beginning of the day, and there are poor children who are not awake in the morning and will not reach the field until midday, and there are elderly people who will not come until the late afternoon. Halakha 18. When a poor person takes some of the pa'a and throws it over the remainder, falls on it or spreads his garment over it, we penalise him and make him relinquish it. Even what he took is removed from his possession and given to another poor person. These laws also apply with regard to leket and to a sheep that was forgotten. Halakha 19. The following rules apply if a person took pa'a and said, this is for the poor person, so and so. If the person who took possession of the pa'a is also poor, the acquisition is binding. Since he has the right to acquire it himself, he may acquire it for the other person. If the person who took possession was rich, he does not acquire it for him. Instead, he should give it to the poor person he finds first. Halakha 20. When the field, owner of a field leaves pa'a for the poor people standing before him, and a poor person comes from behind him and takes it, that person acquires it. For a, poor, for a person does not acquire lechet, shichacha and pe'ah, or a seller that was lost until it reaches his possession.